Hello, this is uh, Ernie's test of his IS200 plug and play to ECU Master Black for Crest Motorsports. Uh, so it's a bit of a mess here. I do apologize. This is a little jumper test harness that we do. Obviously, we don't have a 1G engine that we can test it on. So I've just created a harness which goes through all of the units of interest like coils, injectors, etc. So what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to show you what this looks like. So uh, bear with me a second and you'll see exactly the whole setup and how it works. And we'll come back and go through everything else. All right. Okay, so that's what it all looks like, but basically inside the car, your box fits inside there. Your original harness is all just gonna plug directly into there. Then obviously you've got the MPX device underneath, which makes your gauges work, and we've got the patch harness that comes to the ECU Master Black over there, okay? So these can obviously be custom made to how long you want. Uh, so this one is obviously gonna be put inside the ECU box here, but we can make them as long so you can have them next to the battery on the strut tower. If you wanna build a nice bracket over here and have it over there, again, no problem at all. So we can make that as long as you want, basically. All right, so I've gone through the majority of the testing. Obviously, I've got my injector with my spark, I coiled my spark plug, I've tested all of those. I've got all my injectors as LEDs over here. So those are all tested now and working. We're gonna show you the drive-by wire working as well. We're gonna go through all the bits and bobs of make it an IS200 plug in place. So show all the stuff working on the gauges, etc. So first thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna come over and as it's a plug and play, we're just literally gonna press the ignition key on. You can hear the ECU beep into life. You can actually, you might be able to hear the humming of the drive-by-wire throttle as well. But while we're here, we're just gonna go over the bits and that make it uh, plug and play. So we've got the ambient temperature over there. Now, the MPX device we're using is an analog device. It doesn't sense the actual ambient temperature. Uh, 18 degrees is just there just to keep a figure on there. Otherwise, a little E would pop up and that would just be annoying as hell, all right? Now, AC. What I'm gonna do is we've the MPX device has the ability to send an AC request. So as soon as I press this button, you're gonna hear the relay click. So I'm just gonna keep quiet now. I'm just gonna move over closer. Okay, so you can see AC does work. And how it works is effectively you've got this pressure switch. All right, that's a pressure switch that controls the fans and the actual um, pressure for the ECU itself. So we are running it through the ECU master. Effectively, what we've got is the MPX device gives out an AC request. We then have the pressure here to show it's all okay. So the ECU turns on the AC magnetic clutch relay when the pressure goes to ground to indicate it's okay, and it gets the ground AC request from the MPX device via the actual car itself. Okay, so that's the whole AC system there. So we're happy with the ambient temp, we're happy with the AC. Now coming over to the dash, we've got our check engine light, which is now controlled by the ECU master, so you can set what conditions will cause check engine light to come on. Uh, in terms of temperature, you can see it shot straight to hot. Now the analog device, um, you can use any temperature sensor. It's not uh, sensitive to any particular one. So we've got our little temp harness over here. And basically what happens is if it gets disconnected, so you can see it's not connected to anything, it shoots all the way to hot, all right? So the second that I earth this out, you're gonna see it comes back down again, okay? And that indicates that obviously we get a resistance through the temperature sensor, so that's absolutely fine. Now, completely adjustable. I do have a video about how to adjust it. So once you get the vehicle up and running and you get up to temperature, you'll obviously have the data from the ECU to know exactly when that is. Then you can adjust the MPX device to make the gauge match what is seeing on the ECU, okay? So that's that one. We've got check engine lights working. We've got the... Um, water temperature working. So next up, we're gonna check the oil. So what I've got here is basically where the oil would normally be attached to. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna earth this out quickly. And as I do, let me just get a decent earth. You'll see, there you go. So as I earth it out, oil light comes on. So that's all working and that's obviously being transmitted by the MPX device to the gauge as well. So that's pretty much that taken care of. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at, obviously you can hear the throttle humming away there. So this is a 2JZ throttle, but it, it, it works on all of them. So basically I'm just going to get in here 
and you can see that it's functioning 100%. So we are happy with that, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is we're going to just feed an RPM signal. So you can see I've got the crank and the cam sensor on there. We're gonna use our little device to feed that. That's then gonna show us that the RPM is working on the dash. So I'm gonna do that now quickly. Now I do need two hands for this, so you're gonna to have to bear with me and just stare into something for the time being. Okay, and I'll leave that there. Okay, so you can see now, we've got the taco working there. And if I go over to the actual ECU itself, you'll see it's got 1147 RPM, which is pretty much spot on from what the dash is there. Uh, so that's absolutely fine. You can adjust the RPM through the actual ECU itself. Um, I do have a video on that if you do want to go watch that there. So I'm just going to remove this for a second. Okay. Right. So those are all the bits that make it work in the IS200. So that's all good. And they're all working and functioning as we should do. Now, the way we've designed this harness is essentially you can add loads of stuff on. So in this particular case, we are actually using a Bosch LSU 4.9 wideband sensor. We are using a Mac boost valve as well because it's going into an IS200 turbo. And so what we've basically done is obviously this would normally sit down inside there. And you'll see here that we've got this excess harness over here. So this one over here, this is for the wideband and the temp. Now we've managed to get these all into the body plugs here. So you'll see there's actually unused pins in there. We've obviously allocated it so we can have an expansion harness over there, okay? So in this particular case, what we've basically done, and I hope you can see over there, but we've labeled them as to where they go, okay? So this one over here is particularly labeled 28 slash 25. So that means 28 pin plug, pin 25. Okay, now these will all be open on your car. So effectively, all you're going to do is take out this plug. There's like a little sort of latch that goes all the way across. You basically use a small screwdriver. You just pick and pick and it comes out about a millimeter. And I do have a video on how to actually deepen all of the stuff. So that'll give you a really good idea as to, as to how to do that. But effectively, when you get it over to your side, what, I, what we recommend for this one is you go to the grommet down in the bottom. You make a very, very small hole because obviously all you've got is these loose wires with terminals on them. You push it up through there, and then ideally the wideband would make its way around there, around the back there, and then obviously plug into the Lambda, which is on your exhausts on that side. You can take it around the front here if you wanted to. That's about two meters long for that one over there. And then obviously you've got your power supply coming in there. So I'm gonna go through how to connect that for you as well. And secondly, we've got our Mac, now the Mac goes into a pin on the 24 pin plug, so that's gonna be designed to come out through the engine grommet to come all the way over to the other side over there along with the engine harness, okay? And so basically what we need to do is we need to get powers and grounds. They're all available through the black connector here. Obviously I've got a blue one, but through the black connector over there. So just to show you, this is basically what you're working with inside your ECU box. It's probably a little bit more like more like that basically there so you've got your black you've got your gray and you've got your blue over there so you'll have plugs already in there now what you're going to notice is on this top one over here you've obviously got a black with a red over there and you've got a brown over there now this is a junction connector so effectively it's it, the bottom row joins the three together and the three together the top row joins two 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 so basically for the mac one in this particular case we are using a ground so you'll see what I've done here is I've actually labeled it black pin nine, okay? So now we're looking at the top of the plug and inside the plug, you'll see over there, they are actually all labeled. I don't know how the camera is gonna pick it up, but if you look on the bottom here, you'll see they're all labeled. But basically the easiest way to read a plug on a Toyota is clip at the top. If the wires are coming towards you, Top right is number one, and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you go the next row down on the right hand side, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, or however it goes, okay? So that's the easiest way to read the plug over there. All right, so for the Mac one that comes into the harness there, it goes into pin 24, and it's gonna go into the black plug pin nine. That means that that becomes part of the engine harness, and you can then remove the engine harness with the Mac sub harness, no problem at all. You're not gonna have any wires that are loose hanging over that you have to take out or et cetera, et cetera. So all well thought out. 
you're just gonna go straight in there. If you wanna pull the engine and the engine on up, not a problem at all. Now, for the wide band, we need power for the wide band now. So what we're gonna basically happen is, if you look underneath this black plug over here, you'll see that what we've got over there is we've got our black and our red over there. Now those are powers, but also down at the bottom here, we've got a red with a blue, so that's also powers as well, okay? So on the wide band harness down here, what you're gonna see is I've labeled it black eight, and it's got the correct terminal on, because it's the same either side, so at the moment it's plugged in there to get power from there, but in the app, actual application, you're just gonna move this white frame out the way, get access to this bottom plug, unclip it, Again, it's got like a little latch that runs all the way across. It's in white. You just unclip it with a small screwdriver. It comes out about a millimeter, millimeter and a half, if you want to be that fancy. Um, and then you're just going to put it into this pin right next to this red and blue one over there. That's then going to supply the power for your wideband sensor. Now, again, the reason we've done that is obviously all of these wires are going to come through the grommet at the bottom. And because we've had to use the body plugs over there, if we decided to try and take the power from the top of the black plug, that would mean if you wanted to remove the engine harness, then obviously you'd have to deepen that every single time, otherwise it's gonna go there. So we go in from the bottom, we plug in over there, then this effectively becomes part of the body harness. So you can remove the entire engine with its harness by just unplugging these three plugs and those two plugs. Off you go, no problem at all. You'll take the Mac harness with you, but this will stay inside the car and it won't move and yeah, you can just change it around. Now, we do have extra on here. In this particular case, we haven't specified it, but we do have an allocation for a fuel pressure and an oil pressure sensor as well. And in the top of these plugs, we've got a five volts and we've got a sensor ground. So basically analog inputs, five volt sensor ground. So effectively you can add whatever zero to five volt sensor you want and you can add two of them into the section over here. Just need to give us a shout. We'll make your harness exactly like this. And then again, it'll plug into there, go down through the grommet and you can add on whatever sensor you want. So if you want to add on, um, you could add on say oil pressure and a temperature, no problem at all, because we've got two analog inputs there. You can add oil pressure, fuel pressure, no problem. We've got it all over there. Again, just give us a shout and we can get that done for you. Okay, so hopefully that is cleared up everything so that you are happy to go ahead. Obviously, I know that you're not physically installing this one, but uh, hopefully Tom will show you the video so you have a good idea as to exactly how everything works and to know that you obviously have the ability to add stuff on later as well. Okay, so if anybody else has any questions, do please feel free to let us know. Comment below, we'll try and get back to them as quickly as we can, uh, or you can find us on Facebook at phoenixenginemanagement.com. Okay, so thanks for watching guys. We'll see you again later. Enjoy. Bye-bye.